Hello and welcome, I'm Lloyd. This is the Dressing Gown Diary. Let's do a very quick review of round one because I've left it late and there's an awful lot to talk about. Wow, Ireland started like a train, didn't they? They opened up the Six Nations. Wales just didn't know what was going on. The atmosphere in the Principality was electric to start with. But then two minutes in, points scored from Ireland. Nine penalties given away in the first, uh, I think it was 20 minutes. The old boys of Welsh pack looked just that old, slow, off the pace. Ireland, though, just took their chances. James Lowe with a great uh, intercept runaway try, but it wasn't without issues for Ireland. Wales opened them up at times and didn't take their opportunities. Dan Bigger butchered a two-on-one when both the Irish defenders had slipped. Rio Dyer probably should have done better and scored. So Wales will take some comfort from what went on. Later on, Ireland conceded a load of penalties as well as Wales got wise to the way the referee was playing. But you always felt that Ireland had another gear. If they needed to, they could move on and they did enough to get away, walk away from Cardiff with a win. Thanks very much. Second game of the Six Nations. Oh, what a test match that was as the Scots piled into Twickenham and walked away with the spoils yet again. They've created the winning habit against England now. That's three in a row. The Calcutta Cup goes back up to Edinburgh. Wow, what a victory. England again lacking cohesion in that 10, 12, 13 channel. As you've seen with the selections today, Smith has been dropped. Farrell back into 10. Neither really know where to defend. Was that the fault for Van der Merwe with his tries? What an amazing try the first one was. Individual brilliance. My favourite part of that was defend against uh, Don Brandt where he just... Get out my way, I'm going through. He's a big boy, isn't he, Van der Merwe? But the winning try in the 74th minute, what execution from Scotland. They showed commitment, uh, patience, knowing that they had enough. England really will be spitting nails. They didn't close the game out from that point. But that's the way things have gone forward. It was kind of much of a muchness. Was there any difference in the way Borthwick had set the team up? Not really. It was carrying on. I've seen some uh, videos after the game of England fans coming out uh, complaining about the lack of atmosphere and all they could hear were the Scots singing. But that's the thing. England rugby haven't really given the fans much to sing about recently. Can they find another gear uh, this weekend? We'll come on to the preview in a second. The final game of the weekend, again, a brilliant test match. Italy showing absolute passion, drive, commitment to really worry the French. The French are on great form. They've won uh, 13, uh, the 14 unbeaten at the moment. So, you know, they are in banging form and, and Italy really, really pushed them close. They'll be slightly annoyed with how they finished. The two penalties late on. The one, I've got sympathy with the, uh, with the kicker to not make the corner. But the second one, when you're just almost in parallel, you've got to get it within five metres. It was irrelevant in the end because Italy couldn't secure the, uh, the line out and ended up losing the match. But France will be looking at this. They conceded 18 penalties in this game. I'm sure Sean Edwards will have ripped shreds off people come Monday morning. He would not have been happy. The Welsh boys will tell you all about that. So moving on to this weekend. Opens up with Ireland-France. What a test match this is. Is this the Grand Slam decider? Certainly looks that way after round uh, after round one. France will be hoping for significant improvement. They are 14 unbeaten. Can they make it 15? 14 is a country record for France. Uh, Ireland at home have won 21 out of 22. They are 30. If they win this game, it'll be 13 in a row, which is a country record. Something is going to give this weekend. Can't see a draw. But... Um, it, you know, Ireland, the way they're playing, they're playing with conviction. Uh, Farrell's got them really well coached and set up. They are very strong. So you'd have to fancy Ireland against France. The second game of the weekend sees Scotland host, uh, host Wales. Scotland haven't won the opening two matches of the Six Nations since 1996. Is this the year that they back up a win against England with a win against Scott, uh, against Wales? Wales have rung the changes. They've uh, Is this with an eye in the future? They've dropped Tipperick and Alwyn Jones completely from the squad. Uh, Faletau, who probably had his worst game in a Welsh shirt on Saturday, drops to the bench. Um, it's certainly a young-looking team. Is Gatlin looking forward rather than focusing specifically on this game? Obviously, with the uh, with the World Cup just over the horizon. Wales, uh, Wales have now lost 10 out of 13 test matches. They've lost four in a row in the Six Nations. 
but then you look at the Gatland effect. Gatland has won all 10 matches against Scotland. Can he repeat the same thing? And Wales have won 13 out of the last 15 meetings between the two countries. They are a bit of a bogey side, but it's a massive uphill task with Scotland, the way they're playing. They're a very settled team now, only one change with Ferguson coming in at uh, into the front row in, uh, for WP Nell. Uh, the final game of the weekend sees England host Italy. England will be hoping for a significant improvement from where they were. Farrell drops into 10. A completely new three-quarter lineup uh, with uh, 12 and 13. Marchant dropped. Um, can feel a bit hard done by because he was defending massive space. But England will be hoping for significant improvement. But what of Italy? They've also progressed significantly. Can they Can they back up uh, last weekend's performance and try and sneak a win? They've never beaten England in the Six Nations or in any competition, in, in fact. So could this be the time? It's going to be a massive ask. If England lose, I mean, where do you go from there? You know, losing your first two games, you're rocking up into the Principality Stadium, which will be a red-hot atmosphere, I've no doubt, regardless of whether Wales can come back from Scotland with a win. So Freddie's flutter for the weekend. Uh, I do hope those of you that backed, uh, we, we, we went with uh, Italy on the handicap, and obviously they came in, uh, came in trumps this weekend. Freddie's flutter is Ireland. You can get about, they're on minus four, four to five. I just fancy them to turn France over quite comfortably this weekend. So get on, get on Ireland, minus four and a half on the handicap. You should get on most, uh, most bookmakers. This is the dressing gown diary. Enjoy all six week, uh, six halves of the, uh, of the rugby of the, this weekend. And we'll catch you on the other side.